A look who's back. Chris Bosch has returned to Atlanta as Georgia Tech welcomes number 18 Clemson to a sold out McCamish Pavilion. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Alongside Corey Alexander, I'm Anish Schropp. Clemson looked poised to end a seven-year NCAA tournament drought, and then last weekend they lost their best player, Dante Grantham, to a season-ending injury. Tuesday, Clemson scores 36 in a loss to Virginia. They've got to recalibrate down the stretch. And you don't just lose 14 points or seven rebounds a game when you lose Grantham. You lose that vocal leader that he has been for this team all season long. And more importantly, their identity to an extent because he was the young man that allowed them by his rebounding and pushing the ball out on the court for them to be able to score easy in transition. So Clemson's going to have a tougher time finishing this ACC season without Grantham. But Brad Brownell's team is poised to still make that NCAA tournament The resume run. looks good, but but now the task harder without Grant. The meanwhile for Georgia Tech, they've lost three in a row. They need Ben Lammers to play better. And Ben Lammers, who had a breakout season a year ago for Josh Pastor, put up tremendous numbers. His numbers down this year, but one team he had success against was Clemson. 24 points a game, nine and a half rebounds. So he needs to find that confidence and bring that here to McCamish Pavilion tonight. Can the Yellow Jackets big man of today Finally break out this season with the big man of yesteryear looking on. Thank you so much. It's brought to you by Caramel M&M's. We're making caramel fun. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider, naturally refreshing. Eighteenth ranked Clemson and Georgia Tech about ready for tip at a sold out McCamish Pavilion. Yellow Jackets looking to end a three game losing streak. Clemson also looking to get back in the win column. Starting lineups first for Clemson. Marquise Reed, their leading scorer, and Amir Sims stepping up, making his second start with Dante Grantham out for the year. And Amir Sims with a career high nine points versus Virginia. The team only scored 36, and Brad Brownell was impressed with the way that his freshman came out and played in that game. For Georgia Tech, Josh Okogi, their leading scorer at almost 18 per game. Ben Lammers, seven double-doubles this season. And Jose Alvarado, last time out, tied a career high with 23 points. Josh Pastner closing in on 200 career wins. Sitting at 198, the reigning ACC Coach of the Year. And Brad Brownell for Clemson uh, looking to get the Tigers back to the NCAA Tournament. A week ago, it looked like a sure thing. Things have changed a little with the injury to Grantham, and it'll be interesting to see how Clemson responds, especially after what happened on Tuesday. And that was the worst-case scenario for them, having to go play Virginia at the JPJ against that defense without Grantham. A wake-up call, I'm sure, for the Clemson Tigers, and I know they're anxious about getting another opportunity here this evening. Bill Covington, Doug Shouse, Kip Kissinger, the officials in tonight's game. And right off the get-go, Shelton Mitchell touches it. So Georgia Tech will have the ball. Three seconds elapsed. I'm not sure Shelton needed to play a little deeper in center field on that one, but Elijah Thomas got a lot of power on that basketball over Shelton's head. Alvarado, the freshman point guard out of New York City. Now Josh Okogi. Abdullah Gay on the inside gets the soft touch. And he is starting to come into his own here in conference play. He has, and these you're talking about a young man who in his career, before the last eight game stretch, this being the ninth, those had only scored 70 points. And that, those two points just gave him 80 points in his last nine games. Amir Sims misses on his first attempt. Akogi looking to push. 
Georgia Tech wants to use transition. A big key for Clemson tonight is getting back in transition. And that's actually the same key for Georgia Tech on defense. Both coaches talked to us about how important it was to get back and build that wall and not, not allow either of these teams to get it done in transition. But A.D. Gay is getting it done in the post early in this game. He's become a scoring threat. Josh Pastner talking to us at shoot around. The Georgia Tech has to get the ball inside more to Gay and to Lammers. You know, he also told us that part of Lammers' production being down was the fact that Gay is scoring more, and they didn't have that option a year ago. Brandon Alston, the graduate transfer from Lehigh, connects for three. And a 7 0 run by Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech found themselves, I'm sorry, Clemson found themselves in the same predicament against Virginia. Virginia got off to a 7 0 start, forcing Brad Brownell to call a timeout early in that game. And here they are, Deja Vu once again, Georgia Tech, 7 0 from the start. Abdullah Gay averaging almost a dozen points per game over his last six contests. Season average about six and a half. He has emerged for Georgia Tech. And he, he also has become more of a focus for Josh Pastner to get him opportunities. You see Pastner clearing the way for A.D. Gay to be able to operate in the post and two early baskets for him paying his coach off for having confidence in him. He was working on his post moves quite a bit during shoot around today. Long three by Gabe DeVoe, and Clemson is on the board. And it was Gabe DeVoe. We mentioned Clemson getting off that slow start at Virginia, but it was Gabe DeVoe who dug them out of a hole. 11 first half points for him on Tuesday night. So Gabe DeVoe, the only senior out there getting heavy minutes for Clemson. <laughs> Josh Pastner told us last year, Abdullah Gay was not an ACC caliber player. Boy, has he turned into one. He really has. I mean, when you think about the fact that he's not only becoming a piece, but a go-to scorer on the post, so much so to where he's getting the opportunities time and time again down the floor, that's a compliment. But Gabe DeVoe knocking down his second three-pointer early in this game. You mentioned DeVoe, we're talking about he's actually the roommate of Dante Grantham. So I'm sure it, with, as a senior, he's taking more of the responsibility on his shoulders to try to lift this team with Grantham's absence. DeVoe also a senior, and they're banking on his leadership with Grantham out. Lammers from the baseline. A rebound to Shelton Mitchell, who began his career with Vanderbilt. DeVoe, heat check. Oh, he's got it! A 9-2 Clemson run after Georgia Tech scored the first seven points of the game. And we, I mentioned Gabe DeVoe with those 11 first half points versus Virginia, but none of those were from beyond the arc. Everything was attacking the basket, but already three for three early in this game from the bonus field. That early timeout by Brad Brownell worked as Okoge hits the turnaround. And that's a tough cover right there to have to guard Josh Okoge with his ability to put the ball on the floor and play on the perimeter. If he's able to add that post presence to his game, watch out ACC. This Georgia Tech team got off to a rough start this year, 6-7 and seven at one point. And a big reason why was Okoge missed the first eight games. He was suspended, then had an injury which took time to heal. Ben Lammers was playing on a bum ankle. There were a number of other players in and out of the lineup, and it wasn't until around Christmas time that Josh Pastner could practice with his full roster. And he's seen some results of that. He talked to us about Jose Alvarado. His freshman point guard oftentimes would go four shots against the bigs. This time, Alvarado keeping his dribble alive and getting Ben Lammers a quality look right at the top of the key. Here is DeVoe, he's got all nine Clemson points, drops it off. Elijah Thomas blocked by Gay, last touch Thomas. And it's Georgia Tech ball, Abdullah Gay making his presence felt early for Georgia Tech. Clemson trying to find its identity without Dante Grantham. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Dante Grantham.
Last weekend, a tough blow for Clemson senior forward Dante Grantham tearing his ACL against Notre Dame. Dante Grantham in the midst of his best season with the Tigers, 14 points per game, shooting better than 50% from the field. And joining us now is the Clemson senior Dante Grantham. Describe the emotions that you've gone through this past week. Uh, it's been tough, man, you know, just going down your senior year, you know, uh, all the hard work I put in this summer, you know, just trying to lead our team to an NCAA tournament. Just, I'm so emotionally into this team that it hurts, it hurts me more than anything that I'm not out there with them rather than me just being hurt. So it just hurts that I can't be out there with my brothers fighting. But I'm going to stay strong and stay positive, and I still have a big voice in our team. And one of the things I've been able to spend some time with you this week, Tuesday, and then, of course, this, this morning the shoot-around, you have been extremely positive. You said try to stay positive. I've never seen anyone who's gone through a situation like you have adjust to it and, more importantly, to become stay that vocal voice. What is it that you're trying to get across to your team as you go through this process? Uh, like I said, positivity is just huge, you know. Um, if you dwell on the past, you know, just you're just going to stay in the past, you know. So I just try to stay positive, and God does things for a reason, you know. And, just believe in myself and believe in I'm going to come back better than ever and believe in my, my work because I've been hurt before, you know, and, just, and I came back stronger. So just believing in myself and believing in my work ethic, and I'll be fine. And I know the NCAA tournament was very important to you. You haven't played in one in your time at Clemson. Your team is on that trajectory to get there. And then, of course, with the injury, it, you know, it will be something that is evaluated when the committee looks at Clemson if you don't win the ACC tournament. What is it? Why do you think that this team is still going to be an NCAA tournament team? Because we have such huge pieces to our team, not only just me. We have guys that can really, each night, somebody can go for 20, you know. And I know I'm a leader of this team, but we got guys with big voices on our team, you know. Like, Elijah Thomas, if you see something out there on the court that, that he wants to tell the team and he expresses how he feels, you know, Gabe Bevo, he's another senior. He's been in a lot of places and he has a big voice on our team. And, this guys, just, they're experienced players, you know, we got a lot of seniors and I just believe in them and we're so together that anything can happen with our team. How do you still be a leader when you can't be on the floor? Just using my voice on the sideline, you know, I'm an experienced player, I've, I've been playing here for the last four years and just I've been in every situation there is and just helping the young guys out like Amir who's, who's in my spot right now, just, just trying to be a positive role model for him and just make him believe in his stuff that he's a great player and it's his, it's his time, you know. He now becomes a key piece for this team. So take us inside practice this past week. What have you been telling Amir Sims? Just to believe in himself, you know. And if you got any questions, just ask the guys on the court. And like I tell everybody, we're always going to battle adversity throughout the game. It's, it's how we respond to the game, you know what I'm saying? And just, just staying tough. He's a freshman. And... I was thrown in there early as a freshman. I started as a freshman, so just listening to the leaders and the seniors on the team really helped me out, so just giving him that a piece of advice. For right now, Georgia Tech is in the midst of an 8-0 run, increasing their largest lead of the game so far. What is it that your Clemson Tigers need to do right now to stem the tide and get back into this game? Uh, just stay together as a team, you know? Like I said, especially in the ACC, everybody makes their run, and basketball is the game of run, so. Just locked down defensively. We're a tough team when we were really locked in defensively. And uh, Dave Scar just came in the game. He's a really good defender for our team. So when we really lock in defensively, it gets our offense going. So we're about to see uh, we need to step up this defensive possession and really play hard. And that seems to be the big difference from last year's team to this year's team. You guys seem to have really bought in on the defensive end this season. Yeah. Uh, this offseason, Coach Barnell really stressed about defense with our team. We know we got a lot of talented scores in our team, but what's going to win us games is our defensive stops and our one-on-one -on -one play, just really staying together. And that's what we really did this offseason. And you see Ben Lammers come in with the offensive rebound. Now, you're the leading rebounder on this Good team. Good Shelly. There you go. <laughs> now, that's what, this is what he does in, in shoot-around all day. <laughs> now, but you're the leading rebounder on this team. With your absence, who needs to step up on the glass to help this team out? You know what, I think the guards really need to step up, Marquise Reed and Gabe DeVoe. You know, this year they've been playing, they've been big on the glass. Uh, Gabe DeVoe, Marquise Reed, I think they really need to go in there and help Elijah Thomas out on the glass. And Amir is a big, strong, physical player, so he can really go in there and rebound and, and really get some tough rebounds. So 
Just our guards coming down and rebounding and making strong plays because they can do it. Well, there's your roommate, Gabe DeVoe. Good Hot hand early. Five to shoot. And a travel in violation on David Scora. Well, Dante, we appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you guys. Best of luck to you in your recovery and your future endeavors. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the sideline, being as vocal as you were on the court. Of course, man. Thank you. I appreciate and, your And time. what happened? I told you to wear a suit. What happened to your, your, your suit uh, today? <laughs> my knees, I, I got to wear sweats. I got to be comfortable throughout the game because I stand up. I yell a lot. I move a lot. I don't know how the coaches do it, you know. I, if I was a coach, I'd be moving everywhere. I'd be out my coach's box. I'd be in the game, you know. So I had to throw in the suit today. That I mean, how to throw in the sweats today. I understand. <laughs> I understand it. it. It's easy to travel Indeed. in that. Yep. <laughs> appreciate appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Austin travels Georgia Tech in the midst of a 13 to 3 run. The Yellow Jackets up by 10. Thanks to Dante Grantham for joining us for a few minutes. Ben Lammers, Josh Akogi off the good starts for Georgia Tech along with AD Gay. Well, and these are the guys that carried Georgia Tech a year ago, and I'm sure Josh Pastner happy to be back home and happy to see his two starters getting the job done. They have as many points in the paint Georgia Tech does as Clemson has throughout the game. 12 right now, points in the paint, 12-0 advantage for Georgia Tech in the paint thus far. All of Clemson's field goals have been three-point field goals. And Josh Pastner told us, get the ball inside, get the ball to Lammers, get it to Gay. They've been successful doing that 10 of 14 from the field. And Georgia Tech has assisted on seven of those baskets. Gabe DeVoe looking for his fourth three. Alvarado the rebound. Speeds up court. Here's Tyrick Jackson. And part of the reason why all the Clemson's baskets are three-pointers is because of the Georgia Tech zone. But A.D. Gay continues to go to work in the post. It, it, it's amazing that you can talk about a young man who has improved that much. And he's, he had 70 up until the Yale game on January the 6th. He had 70 career points. He has now scored over 80 points in his past eight plus games that is tremendous that a young man really improves that much especially throughout the season and he can get his offense without you having to create for him as shelton mitchell hits the three but as we've seen tonight and the last few games he's got a developing post repertoire he really does and he was the first one here for shoot around this morning coming in to get a little bit extra work so maybe we should have known that he was going to get all these opportunities in the post because I'm sure he did. A Kogi fighting through traffic. And Georgia Tech still sizzling from the field. 12 out of 16. All of Clemson's baskets still from beyond the arc. 5 of 8 from 3, 0 for 4 from 2. In the post, Mark Donnell, grad transfer from Michigan. Shot clock at five. Mitchell around to Kogi. Throws one up and over the backboard. But Josh Okogie has had his way early in this game, knocking down the three, attacking the paint. And this is the Josh Okogie that we fell in love with a year ago, who was an all-ACC rookie team member, challenged Dennis Smith Jr., for Rookie of the Year, put up tremendous numbers and really allowed a resurgence for this Georgia Tech team. Alvarado drive and kick. Lammers back iron to vote the rebound. Now the difference with Smith and Akogi last year, Smith came in as a Ballyhood five-star recruit. Akogi was a zero-star recruit. I'm not going to that. Zero-star, you kidding to me? Our ESPN <laughs> rankings. <laughs> Possession arrow, Clemson. Akogi was a very productive high school player. Played in the EYBL for a team that also included Harry Giles, who was the number one player in the country. Altariq Gilbert, who was a McDonald's All-American. And Grant Williams, who is getting the job done at Tennessee right now. So Akogi was kind of the forgotten man. But if you talk to their coach, John Adams, 
he'll be the first one to tell you Akogi was extremely productive for the CP3 All-Star. Averaged 16 points per game last year. Fifth highest total by a Georgia Tech freshman. Amir Sims, Clemson struggling to get it shot off. Back to Mitchell, contested. Tapped up, battled for the rebound, and it comes to Scott Spencer. And give Clemson credit for continuing to play on that possession where many people would think that's out of bounds. But if it doesn't go over the backboard, it's still in bounds, and Clemson coming up with the opportunity to get put some second chance points on the board and successful in doing so. Elijah Thomas on clean up. Todd Rick Jackson driving on Thomas. Count the basket, plus one. Todd Jackson coming off a season low two points versus Florida State. Finding his way to the rim where he truly excels, especially in ACC play, shooting over 50% from the floor when he's attacking the basket. An opportunity to put three on the board. And that is now two fouls on Elijah Thomas. And again, with Dante Grantham out for the season, Thomas is going to have to stay out of foul trouble for Brad Brownell. But that's every opposing coach's goal when they play against Clemson. Josh Pastor told us very right. simply today, we've got to get Thomas in foul trouble. And oftentimes, Thomas is, you know, he comes up with fouls that he needs to try to stay away from. But that one, he's just challenging a shot. He has to be able to go after that one. Thomas in the game with the two fouls. Cade comes through with the block. It'll stay with Clemson, 14 to shoot. An early blitz by Georgia Tech, 29 points already in this opening half. Clemson coming off the game in which they scored just 36 in a loss to Virginia, and at one point had just six points in a 20-minute stretch. As they turn it over here, that's the fourth for Clemson. And that's one of the areas of concern for the Tigers this year. Turnovers have hurt them, and especially at times where, you know, when you're playing without a guy like Grantham, who was another ball handler on the floor, you've got to be even tighter with the basketball right there. And Shelton Mitchell just trying to make a play. Elijah Thomas not ready for that pass coming his direction. Todrick Jackson now inside to Gay, who's got eight. Over to Lammers. Kicks it to the corner. Gay guarded by Sims. Gay going to work out the freshman. Good defense that time by Amir Sims. It'll stay with Clemson, but the Tigers on their heels down a dozen in ATL. Shockwaves sent through the ACC yesterday. NC State knocking off North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And then a couple of hours later, Virginia taking down Duke and Cameron Indoor. First time since 1973 that both UNC and Duke lost at home on the same day. 1973 was a great year. That was the year you were born? That was the year I was born. It was a great year. That's a long time ago, by the way. <laughs> you said it, not me. I thought I'm glad, I'm you glad said you, it. I'm glad you allowed me to say it. When you, when you think about the fact that those two teams have not both lost a home game on the same day, when you, when you look at oftentimes they're playing, you know, eight miles apart, but they play at home on four out of, you know, ten Saturdays a year, that's a long time to consider that those two teams haven't won. A foul on Todrick Jackson. Well, let's start with Virginia, your alma mater. You've been skeptical at times this season about well, going all in on Virginia despite the record. What did they show you in Durham yesterday? They showed me that they could handle the adversity. And the biggest thing was with DeAndre Hunter, who, in my opinion, has really been the key to where they've been so successful, you know, especially on the road. If you look at what he did at Wake Forest, you saw what he did here against Georgia Tech. 
he has been a special player for them. And when he got hurt and they still were able to go on and win that game, they showed me a lot of the way they adjust to their adversity. And we see the battle down low. Todrick Jackson trying to box out Elijah Thomas. And as you're moving with that big guy up in the air, it can get dangerous. Two quick ones on Todrick Jackson. And meanwhile, Kevin Keats in his first season at NC State has a win over Duke and Carolina. As Clemson has the answer, Gabe DeVoe. He's got 11 of Clemson's 19. Alvarado over to Lammers. Going to work on Thomas. And that's a tough shot. Give Elijah Thomas credit right there. Brad Brownell sticking with Thomas with the two fouls. And also sticking with Gabe DeVoe. Knocking down threes. He has been the answer for Clemson here in this first half. And, you know, for as well as Georgia Tech has played, it's a seven-point game right now. If Clemson is able to come up with a couple of stops, they find themselves in good position before the half. That's because of DeVoe. 14 points, four of five from three-point range. Alvarado picked up by Sims. Zakogi, two to shoot. Step back three. No good. Elijah Thomas, the rebound. Here comes DeVoe, the senior out of Shelby, North Carolina. And that's going to be a goal 10, 16 now for DeVoe, who has been the Clemson offense. Big Monday doubleheader on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, Notre Dame heads to Duke. The Irish have lost five straight. Bonzi Colson injured. Matt Farrell out indefinitely. And then Kansas going to the Little Apple to take on K-State. If the Wildcats win, they would move into a first place tie with Kansas in the Big 12. Alston hits from the outside. And that's a defensive breakdown for Clemson right there. Gabe DeVoe looking immediately at his teammate. That's supposed to be an automatic switch, but doesn't happen on the dribble handoff. And gives Austin an easy look. As you see the cut here, and there's supposed to be a switch between Reed and DeVoe on that possession. As DeVoe looks back at Reed with his hands up, giving up an easy bucket to Austin. Mitchell bumped. And a foul against Georgia Tech and Curtis Haywood. So Shelton Mitchell, the fourth year junior. Played for you at Oak Hill, right? Well, I wasn't actually there coaching oh, yeah, yet. Okay, I, was, okay. I was around that team, but spent a lot of time with Shelton. And Shelton actually was injured during that year at Oak Hill. Missed a lot of time. And I'm not sure if you even know this. Shelton actually signed a letter of intent to play at Wake Forest. And when the new staff came in, it felt like it wasn't a fit. So he ended up going to Vanderbilt, but he wanted to be an ACC guy. So after one year in the AC at Vanderbilt, transfers into Clemson where he's really been given the keys to come in and run the program over the past two seasons continues to get better. And you mentioned his injury history. He had off-season knee surgery, and you know, they monitor his knees closely, trying to keep him healthy for this stretch run. And health now of paramount importance for Clemson with Grantham out for the year. And Brad Brownell's got a quality team. It's not necessarily a deep team. No, it's not, and it's an upperclassman laden team when you think about the number of transfers that they have. As they don't like the foul call to Malik William there going to the basket. They felt as though he went straight up in the air with Alvarado attacking the rim. I tell you what, I think the Clemson side has a point here because he did bring the arm down, but when he brought the arm down, it was all basketball. <laughs> Malik William, uh, the freshman from Orlando, and Alvarado, another freshman, played at Christ the King High School in New York City, and uh, you talk about New York City guards and Georgia Tech. We were talking about this at shoot-around. Kenny Anderson, Stephon Marbury. You know, Alvarado's going to be a four-year guy for Josh Pastner. You almost followed Kenny Anderson 
to Georgia Tech. How big of a deal was it when Kenny committed to Bobby Crimmins? It was huge. And Bobby, of course, a New York guy himself. So it was huge when Kenny came here because Mark Price, Kenny actually was replacing Mark Price. And Mark Price was so good as a player, he showed what Bobby Crimmins was about as a coach and the freedom that he would give to his point guards, which is part of the allure as to why Kenny was able to come here. And, and why you almost came here. And why I wanted to come here and replace Kenny because I wanted to play the exact same way Kenny Anderson did, who was my favorite college player. So not that the Steph Marbury coming here wasn't big, but I think Kenny was the guy who made Georgia Tech point guard you at that time. Without Kenny, you're saying Marbury doesn't even consider Georgia Tech. Probably not. I believe that Kenny was the one that, I mean, no, granted, you had, you know, you had John Sal. Sure. You had Bruce Dowell. You had guys that Bobby had brought in from New York before, but never really going out and getting the nation's number one point guard like he and did. And that New York Kenny. City point guard, there's a cachet to that. There's a big difference when you think New York City point guard. Akogi drops it up for Gay. Ten points. For Abdul Haikay. And that was a great play by Josh Coke, who has averaged over three and a half assists since his return from injury. That's something he's doing more so this year than he did a year ago. He's making his teammates better, so even though he's scoring close to 18 points a game, his assist numbers are up as well. Reed over to Mitchell. Back to Reed. No good, Marquise Reed, 0 for 4. He's Clemson's leading scorer, averaging 16 a game. The emergence of Abdullah Gay continues for Georgia Tech. And Josh Okogie finding Gay for the finish as Georgia Tech owns the eight-point lead. Georgia Tech recognized Chris Bosch earlier tonight. Bosch played one season for the Yellow Jackets. He was the 2003 ACC Rookie of the Year. Led the ACC in field goal percentage. The only other freshman to do that, Antoine Jameson. And the number four pick in that heralded 2003 draft with LeBron and Carmelo and D. Wade. And tonight the first 2,000 fans got Chris Bosch replica jerseys. Did you get one? I did. It's a medium, too, so, <laughs> so I'm, gonna, too, I'm just going to so take it. So it's too big for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been slacking on my workout, so the medium will fit. <laughs> okay, I got it. A few more months, maybe I can get back into this medium. Abdullah Gay has been terrific tonight. Three blocks, ten points. As Josh Pastner told us, he continues to develop into an offensive weapon for the Yellow Jackets. And... Todrick Jackson unable to connect. You know, one of the things that Coach Pastor also talked to us about earlier today, he had six stat sheets in his hand from ACC games yesterday, and he talked about the teams that turned the ball over least and made their free throws are the one who had a great chance to win at the end of those games. And thus far in this one, his team, 10 assists to only two turnovers compared to Clemson with five assists four turnovers both teams perfect from the free throw line thus far but that has been a major advantage for georgia tech in this game the way that they've handled the basketball foul on a kogi his first wednesday an nba double header celtics and knicks and then you got the mavs and suns abe devoe has carried clemson in his first half here comes reed Leans in, left it short, rebound to Lammers. And Reed has struggled a bit recently, only six points versus Virginia, and hasn't really been able to get going in this one. He was, uh, you know, really the guy that Josh Baxter said, we cannot allow him to get off against us and try to keep everyone else in check. But they have to hold Marquise Reed down, and his defense has done a great job of that thus far in this game. Haywood misses from deep. He's now 0 for his last nine from three. Reed began his career at Robert Morris. Northeast Conference Rookie of the Year a couple of seasons ago. Brad Brownell has had success with the transfer route. DeVoe splits the defense, gets the teardrop, and he's got 18. Gabe DeVoe playing great basketball right now. 
keeping his team in this game. And we know about his three-point shooting prowess, but he's really been good, especially when Grantham has been out attacking the rim and making plays at the basket. Yeah. Foul on Malik William, his second. Oh, there's the graphics with the verbiage. Next Celtics, Kyrie. Had a big game in the loss to the Warriors the other day. 37, Steph Curry had 49. The Warriors ended up winning by four. And then it's the Mavs and the Shugs in the late game. Both on Wednesday night. Alston. Alvarado. Counted and won the foul on Mitchell. Alvarado showing a bit of his scoring prowess. More of a setup guy early in the season, but has continued to pick it up. You mentioned earlier, career high 23 points in the game, last game out against Florida State. And continues to shoot the ball very well. Josh Pastner likes this young man, feels as though he's going to be a very good point guard for them in this program, but also recognizes he is a freshman. This is a tough league to have success in, especially for a freshman point guard. Reed, his first field goal, he was 0 for 5. And if you've been watching this game, it feels like Georgia Tech should have a bigger lead, but thanks to Gabe DeVoe, Clemson only down by six and a chance to cut that lead to even less. And there's one of those turnovers right there. Just a careless turnover trying to feed the post for Georgia Tech, but it gives Clemson an opportunity to make this a four point or even a three-point a three point game an opportunity as they get closer to the half. And for Brad Brownell, his team hasn't played well against this zone, but the closer they can get to the, half, the score at halftime, I'm sure the happier he's be. Mitchell from the outside with a chance at a four-point play. Now, so I said they can get it to two, or just get it to four or get it to three. I didn't think that this was an option. <laughs> but they actually can get it to a two-point game if Shelton Mitchell is able to convert on the free throw, making this a four-point play. That would also put Clemson at 36, matching its total from Tuesday. Well, we knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> we knew they would get over 36. That was never a question. That had a lot to do with Virginia's defense as well. Two-point game. Clemson has hit seven threes in the first half. Mitchell and DeVoe with 30 of the 36. Alvarado throws it up, and Clemson can tie it here. They can take the lead with a three. And right now, Brad Brownell screaming at Clyde Trapp, take it easy, make sure they get a quality look at the end of the possession, but they've got the ball in the hands of Gabe DeVoe, and if I'm Clemson, that's where I want the basketball to remain pretty much for this, in, this entire possession. About a six-second differential. Reed looking for help. Trap. Rebound to Vaughn. Trap blocked at the rim by Lammers. And that's how the first half will end. Georgia Tech shot 57% from the field. But Clemson with a late run. And on the back of DeVoe and Mitchell, Tigers right there within striking distance on the road. Halftime here in Atlanta, Georgia Tech 38, Clemson 36. The ESPNU Halftime Report comes to you after these messages. Point game as we get ready for the start of the second half here at McCambridge Pavilion alongside former Virginia standout Corey Alexander. 
I'm in a Shroff, Georgia Tech, a three-game losing streak. Josh Pastner wanted to establish an interior presence. They've done a good job of that in the first half. They have, but what they did, they allowed Clemson to get way too many easy looks from beyond the arc and gave DeVo Shelton Mitchell knocking those threes down against the zone. We'll be interesting to see how much of the zone Josh Pastner plays in the second half. He's notorious for switching up his defense. Always has a number of tricks up his sleeve, so we'll see how he comes about guarding the Tigers. Josh Shikogi, Georgia Tech's leading scorer with nine in the first half. Here's A.D. Gay. He was the high man for Georgia Tech with ten. Lammers, offensive rebound, Gay. But they'll get him for a foul, and it'll be Clemson ball. First foul on Abdullah Gay. And Clemson right now with an opportunity to tie the game or take a lead here on their first offensive possession of the second half. And I'm sure Brad Brownell wants to see a much better start to the second half than he saw to the first half of this game. Elijah Thomas ties it at 38. Thomas, who transferred in from Texas A&M, picked up a couple of fouls in the first half. They need him to stay out of foul trouble here in the second half. Clemson has never led in this game. Georgia Tech has led by as many as a dozen. Here's Lammers, draws the contact. And they'll get him for the offensive foul. And Amir Sims does a great job getting himself in position, absorbing the contact from Ben Lambers and a turnover for Georgia Tech who did a great job in the first half only three first half turnovers but a push off foul and then the offensive foul on Lambers right now as Georgia Tech hasn't come out of the locker room the way I'm sure Josh Passer wanted to see his team especially on the offensive end of the floor 10 to shoot Thomas against Lambers dips in can't get the roll, rebound Gay. Gay sets the screen. Alston thought about it. Lammers baseline J short you know and when you watch Georgia Tech on offense a lot of people would think well why is Lammers on the perimeter while Gay is the guy posting up but Josh Taffer told us earlier AD Gay has become such a post presence that he doesn't mind Ben Lammers floating on the perimeter because he's probably better at facing up and shooting that 15 footer that he made so consistently last year Thomas attacking Lammers who picks up the foul and Elijah Thomas has given Clemson its first lead of the night. Well, one thing's for certain, Brad Brownell did not like the fact that Georgia Tech dominated his team in the first half in the paint. And Elijah Thomas has gotten his hands on the basketball, all three offensive possessions thus far in this half for Clemson. And he's made good on two or three of those possessions. It seems Clemson, which lived on the three in the first half, making a concerted effort to go inside here in the second half. And a foul on the floor. It's on DeVoe, his first. Clemson making the adjustment defensively and really denying A.D. Gay the opportunity to get low post position where he was so dominant in the first half to the tune of 10 points. And right now, if I'm Josh Pastner, I'm looking to see if we can establish Gay back in the post. Alvarado retreating. Alakoti. Shot clock at three. Lammers over Thomas. And that shot not there for Ben Lammers, just two out of seven. He came into this game under 40% from the field in conference play. And you can see Ben Lambert struggling with his confidence. You know, and we talked with Josh Pastor regarding Ben Lambert, you know, earlier today. And he mentioned their game at UCLA to open the season 
He went for 24 and 10, and he felt as though he was playing like a lottery pick. This, their second game against Bethune-Cookman, Ben Lammers turned his ankle, and he says that he, even though he physically is fine, he wasn't able to practice for a very long time, was only playing game minutes, but he's physically fine now. He honestly believes that he's just thinking too much and that his confidence is down because he has struggled to shoot the ball. And a foul down low. If that's Thomas, it's his third. And it is on Elijah Thomas, so three on the junior from Dallas. And I like that adjustment there by Josh Pastner, putting Thomas in that position by throwing Lammers into the post and forcing him to come up with that foul. When Lammers is floating around on the perimeter, it's going to be difficult to get that third foul on Elijah Thomas. Alston forces one up. And that's what Josh Pastner told us. Ben Lammers has to show a little more aggressiveness instead of settling for a lot of those outside shots, even though he can knock them down. And now Elijah Thomas with his three fouls. Shelton Mitchell, the point guard, picks up his third foul. And I know Shelton wanted to stop the break right there, but that's a play where you may just have to get back on defense. Oftentimes, it's better when you have that level of importance to your team it's honestly better to give up the two points than to get that third foul, especially knowing that it's going to take you off the court. And knowing your team doesn't quite have the depth, and you're down your best player, Alston back iron. David Scara into the game for Clemson as Mitchell checked out. Scara transferred from Valpo, originally from Croatia. DeVoe, he's got 20. He's been special here this evening and really has had a very good senior year as Gabe DeVoe continues to be a model of consistency for the Clemson Tigers. But right now, stepping it up when they need buckets, Gabe DeVoe has been the guy to go get it. A Kogi fouled on the drive. Georgia Tech has yet to score in this second half. Clemson. Down two at the break. They lead by five. On the other side, former Georgia Tech standout and the fourth overall pick in the 03 draft. Chris Bosch will sit down with us. Forty-three, thirty-eight. Clemson on top of Georgia Tech and joining us now. Former Yellow Jackets standout. He was the fourth overall pick in the 03 draft. An 11 time NBA All Star, two time NBA champion, Chris Bosch. Chris, first off, health wise, how are you doing? I'm feeling great, man. Um, everything is great. My kids don't worry me around that much. I'm, I'm joking. But, uh, you know, the health is great. Um, the family is good. That's all I could ask for. Now, when you come here and you see this building compared to the Thriller Dome where you played, yeah. what do you think about the, the, the renovations here? Is this the same type of environment that you played it's in? It's a much different environment. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to find my way around. You see how they gutted the place and, and it's changed just a little bit. I mean, you know, this is wonderful. Um, it looks phenomenal. I loved where we were playing as well. So, you know, it's kind of... Um, tell of two different stories but uh you know i've always enjoyed my time here we had a lot of great moments in this arena another three for devoe his fifth he can shoot it he can chris yeah. when you left <laughs> georgia tech after your freshman year the following season georgia tech gets to the final four plays for a championship yeah was there any point there when you said man i wish i could have been a part of that oh yeah for sure man um when i was struggling we were struggling uh uh my rookie year um, it was cold. I had never seen snow like that, never felt cold like that, and we weren't doing too well. And, uh, you know, I was hitting that rookie wall over and over. And, you know, just to see those guys playing, yeah, I naturally thought, like, man, what if I would have played? And it, and it doesn't help when people see, like, you should have stayed. We could have won. You know, it's, uh, it, it was a tough thing to deal with. But, you know, it worked out for, uh, for both parties. It was great. We're going to look at the foul here. A.D. Gay. Going down, you see Mark Donnell's left arm coming over, making contact. Doesn't look anything excessive there. 
And, you know, Chris, you get an opportunity to, you know, you played college basketball, we'll have to say, we'll, we'll call it 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you look at the game today and you see where plays like this are reviewed and everything that's going on with the game compared yeah. to how it was when you played. Yeah. What's the biggest difference in the game now, especially when you watch college basketball? Well, I mean, you know, the replay is huge. I think um, the influence of the NBA game, um, you know, just like you saw the young gentleman shooting the T3 uh, just now, you see the evolution of the three-point shot coming along not as much in college as it is as it is in the pros but you you kind of see how it's kind of bleeding into the game um i mean the, the the replay thing i mean hey man sometimes you get chopped in the throat and that's just a part of that, the that, game that's, that's part, I mean? well that's the era that we grew up in well, it happens well, as part of the game that's you what i'm on. saying just keep it that way sometimes you know you don't want to be the guy that's like oh back in my day that always <laughs> happens only because of replay you know let the guys play you know we get it is there a part of you, you know, you look at your game, you came in the league, you were one of those stretch fours, and yeah, it wasn't as popular then yeah. as it is now. Do you feel, hey, if I would have come into the league 10 years later than I did, it would have been a, a different system, right? Yeah, maybe, but it worked out. No, it worked out. Listen, <laughs> you have I, to three, I had to remind people, I shot like uh, 40, high 40s here. I was shooting threes in college, and Coach Hewitt, he was the first guy to encourage me to do that because I could shoot him and we made a deal. He said, if you work on your shot, I'll allow you to shoot it in, in the games. And so high school, you were not allowed to shoot threes? Dunking was too much fun. <laughs> Probably too easy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was athletic and fast and you know, that's that was my thing. So what drew a kid from Dallas to Georgia Tech, it, it had yeah. to be more than just basketball. Yeah, you know, I was um, I was super into uh, academics. Um, I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer at the time, and Georgia Tech, you know, kind of had that allure of that being a you know a academic um, um, standout and a standout on the court as well. Um, it just made sense to go to the ACC for me, and that was, uh, you know, that was important in getting to my next goal of the NBA. Now, so, so that last the, review, sorry, Corey, that was a, a common foul after that review. Right, so for you now, you and Carmelo Anthony both coming out in that 03 class, both of you guys really were kind of, we probably have to say you know, the originators of the one and done. You guys were kind of <laughs> those guys that really kind of started that trend, even though you could have gone straight out of high school. Now when you see the one and done guys, and especially with you recently retiring and playing against many of those guys, how has that affected the league and college basketball? Well, I mean, I, I think sometimes what you have, uh, you, you get the unique cases with me, Carmelo, LeBron, um, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, uh, Antonio Davis, I mean, Anthony Davis. They, you have those standouts where it's like, okay, he's a pro. He's going to play. But then you have the other guys who kind of leave and get picked late, and then they don't get to develop. Sometimes those guys go straight to the end of the bench, and they kind of get stuck there, and they don't they don't get uh, time to allow to themselves to kind of, you know, develop as a man, develop as a pro, get time on the court, and that kind of sends you in this weird place. And, you, you know. You feel like bird. your year here at Georgia Tech allowed you to kind of go through that development phase to where you didn't have that struggle in the NBA? Yeah, I mean, it was still a struggle. You're still going to struggle. You just want to be able to play basketball good enough to get through it, you know. And um, I just had to man up and, and, and you know, you're going to get beat. You know, they're going to beat you down every night. I'm playing Rasheed Wallace, Kevin Garnett, Ben Wallace, these guys, and I'm like, you know, 210 pounds. <laughs> With rocks in my socks, you know. And what, 19 years old? <laughs> 19 years old. And, you know, that's just a part of the game. You, you, you know, it takes time to mature, but sometimes that pain, you know, brings you into a good place. Ooh, that was a nifty move. The bigs on the last couple of possessions with Chris sitting here. Yeah. Abdullah Gay and Ben Lammers, Georgia Tech, back to within four. Hey, I like this guy. He's doing it all. Look, he's guarding the point guard. He's got the up and under post moves. Are you talking That's about? good D. Ah, oh, better <laughs> offense. Well, you know the rules. Great offense beats good defense any time. That, that's what I said all the time. And you're talking about Abdul Gay and, you know, a young man who's really developed here at Georgia Tech, becoming one much better player. Now, for you, you're big into engineering. One of the main reasons that you came here, you continue, you're one of those guys who likes to continue education. But you only school one year. Are they going to see yeah. you back on campus here at Georgia Tech sometime soon? No. No, I'm just going to get ahead of that one and say no. 
I can't I can't be caught in history 102 <laughs> with a chance you know. court. Nah, man, I'm 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 past that. I don't know if I'll ever get my degree. Hopefully one day. You know, I think I'm still considered a freshman, man. Uh, well, no, you're probably a sophomore now. No. Nah, nah, oh no. I'm not a sophomore. <laughs> okay. You don't, don't get think... work experience credits. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't get those. I didn't get those credits in the second semester. Right. Just, you, you, were, know, you were busy preparing yeah, for the NBA the draft. Draft was coming. I understand. <laughs> You've always been a guy though who's had other interests outside of basketball. So now, yeah. w what are you doing these days? What occupies your mind? Man, um, you know, outside of my kids and my family, uh, you know, I love music. Um, I've been learning instruments and stuff like that. What are you playing? The guitar. Yeah, I play the guitar, I go to concerts and stuff like that. Is there a song that you've got down? Uh, uh, it's good to be king, Tom Petty. Nice. Tom Petty was a man. We got to see him, uh, you know, rest, rest, rest his uh, soul. We got to see him last uh, summer, which was phenomenal. He was still doing it. You know, till the day it uh, came to an end. And I read somewhere that you're now into computer coding as well. Yeah, I, I was. Um, I was kind of that. That was the whole Georgia Tech thing. I was kind of doing it then, and you know, we've um, been working with uh, programs like Code.org. Um, you know, bringing um, coding to uh, 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 public education. You know, I'm just trying to been helping them out. I've uh, actually did a visited a couple of schools in uh, L.A. and you know, a couple in Texas, and just trying to you know get kids interested in that stuff because it's uh you know it's the present and the future and it's going to be very important for the workforce before we let you go nba is there still an itch to get back have you been medically cleared to go back no nah, that's you know I, I haven't even started that process i'm just you know getting my body keeping my body and mind in it that's the most important thing you know i know there's a process to that and you know i am looking forward to uh you know trying that process out pretty soon so you know we shall see and before we go to break I, I know america wants to know breaking news here your four miami heat teams or the golden state warriors Ooh. who wins in you the know, series you know what that's I, of course i'm gonna say us. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty good though <laughs> But look, here's the thing, man. They're, I'm always going to say this, but I would have loved to compete against that team. I think everyone would have loved team. to have seen yeah, that I mean, series. They kind of, they, they kind of, we had the fast, small ball type thing, and they had, they just took it and said, oh, okay, we're going to do this. You know, Absolutely. so it's, uh, it's great to watch. Chris, we appreciate, appreciate having you, my thank man. Thank you very much. You might have a career future in TV, uh, so don't, thank, don't thank pass you. that one up, but don't come to college basketball, though. Go All to right. NBA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I would like to say rest in peace to the great Hank Thomas. Chris Bosch. Good job with that. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. It doesn't get better than dogs doing tricks at halftime. That's what we saw for the halftime entertainment, and we just had a chance to catch up with Chris Bosch, who spent the 2002-2003 season at Georgia Tech and uh, leaving the possibility of an NBA return open. He had a, a blood clot issue, which forced him to retire, and uh, he was released by the Miami Heat last year. 11-time All-Star, two-time NBA champion. I, I know he says he's not working out as much as he used to. Still looks to be in pretty good shape. And he told us all you got to do now is shoot three, so of course right. we know he's more than capable of doing that. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard to go away from the game when you've done it your whole life. And for a young man who really, because of health issues, had to leave the game truly in his prime, I'm sure it's difficult for him to sit and watch. Clemson trailed by as many as a dozen in the first half, led by as many as eight here in the second half. Now a three-point game. Georgia Tech has lost three in a row. Clemson last time out held it to just 36 points against Virginia. That was the first game. Without Dante Grantham, the Tigers' leading score out for the season with a torn ACL. Mitchell ahead of the pack, and it's 54-49. And that's another area where Clemson has had an advantage over Georgia Tech in fast break points in this game. Now 10-0, looking to be 12-0. Clemson getting the easy baskets, and Josh Pastor told us earlier today that their team had to keep Clemson out of transition. And Clemson's defense has found a way to get them some easy looks on the last two possessions. A career night for Gabe DeVoe. He's got 25 and a foul on the floor. Clemson foul trouble. 
Two great defensive plays by Marquise Reed, and both of those ending up with Reed getting an assist. The first to Shelton Mitchell, and then the dunk for Gabe DeVoe. But give Marquise Reed credit for getting the job done defensively, coming up with back-to-back -back steals. So Josh Okogie to the free throw line, coming off a 16-point, 16-rebound game against Florida State. That was a loss midweek. And it's easy to look at Georgia Tech's overall record and you say 10 and 10. You know, they should be an easy out in the ACC. It's two different teams. The one we saw in non-conference was not healthy, did not have a lot of bodies who were able to practice. They're almost at their full complement now, and they are a dangerous out in this conference, especially at home. Yeah, but they're in the midst of a tough stretch. Now this the third out of four games where they've had to play against a ranked opponent, and the only ranked opponent that they that they played in that stretch, unranked opponent, was Florida State, who's really good and receiving votes. So, you know, a tough stretch for Clemson in ACC play after getting started off to a 3-1 and one start. Five to shoot. DeVoe over Lammers. Akogi the rebound. Lammers driving, and there's the aggressiveness Josh Pastner wants to see from the senior out of San Antonio. And because of that, Brad Brownell doesn't want to see it, so Elijah Thomas will return to the game with his three fouls to try to give Clemson that defensive presence along the baseline. Mitchell with a three. You know, and I'm going to say this, and this is no slight to the kid. When Shelton Mitchell came out of high school, he flat out could not shoot. And you're talking about a young man who's now made four three-pointers in this game, has really put the work into his game to become a much better player. And you just love watching guys develop. You know, we, we celebrate so many of the one-and-done players and guys that get it, but what about the guys that are four-year players or even transfers that become very good college basketball players? Lammers the long two. He's got 10. And you're right about Mitchell, who's got 17 points, four threes tonight. And Terrell McIntyre, the Clemson great, who is now on their coaching staff, told me before the game, Shelton Mitchell is having a big game here tonight. Shelton missed a lot of practice this past week with the flu, and he felt as though Shelton was going to have a huge performance here, and he's been right about that. Sims, no good. The follow is not there by Donnell, but he's able to draw the foul. And when you celebrate seniors, another one of those, Ben Lammers, starting to become a little more aggressive on the offensive end of the floor, getting to the rim for the easy layup and then knocking down the jumper. And Brad Brownell not liking to see that, so Elijah Thomas immediately up off the bench and headed back into the game. Now you know Thomas is prone to foul trouble. And here comes Elijah Thomas with the three fouls. And if you're Georgia Tech, do you go right at him to try to get that fourth foul? Well, the way they got the third foul was actually getting Ben Lammers off of the perimeter and running him into the post. However, what you're looking at now for the matchup, you've got David Scar trying to guard A.D. Gay. And Gay has been very good on the post in this game. So seeing Lammers stepping out, knocking down jump shots, doesn't bother Josh Pastner either. Alvarado left hand, rebound to Reed. Clemson looks to push, DeVoe. He's got a career high 25. And he calls a timeout. Clemson, after a bit of a slow start in this game, has responded behind its senior, Gabe DeVoe. Tigers by six. A big Monday doubleheader on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern, Notre Dame goes to Cameron Indoor to take on number four, Duke. Then it is Kansas and Kansas State. Jayhawks won the first meeting at Fog, 73-72. Boy, Notre Dame with the injuries mounting Colson, Farrell, 
They're in a free fall. They have lost five in a row after starting 3-0 in conference play. And a team that had significant postseason aspirations may find itself not even in the NCAA tournament. Well, and, and, and that's a possibility, but Mike Gray, one of the best that the league has and that the country has running along that sideline, I'm not going to count the Irish out yet because I know that there's a chance that if things are going well enough, they can get Bonzi Colson back. Matt Farrell hopefully gets back into the lineup. DJ Harvey hopefully gets back. And they may be able to put together some wins at the end of ACC play that gets them right back into the mix. Alvarado trying to split the deep. Back to Lammers. Lost it. Reed looking to maneuver around. Kogi now picks up the dribble. Reed hasn't scored much, but he's got 10 assists. Thomas on the inside, bothered by Lammers, one of the best shot blockers in the ACC. It'll stay with Georgia Tech. Clemson still nursing its six-point lead with 7.03 to go in regulation. Gabe DeVoe's roommate is the injured Dante Grantham, and DeVoe picking up for Grantham tonight a career-high 25. Well, his production with his normal 11 points and Grantham 14 would get him to 25 points, right? So basically, he's doing what he and his roomie would have gotten done in this game, and he's done it in all phases of the game this evening. And you see DeVoe and Grantham, both those guys, having conversation in the huddle, talking to each other, Brad Brunell told us time and time again, Grantham was the emotional leader, the vocal leader of this team, and he continues to do so even in the huddles without a uniform on. Arkogi draws the foul. Brad Brunell told us at shoot-around that Shelton Mitchell and Gabe DeVoe had to be the leaders on this team with Grantham's sideline. When we talked to Grantham during the game earlier, he said he's still going to try to lead from the bench, but on the court it had to be Mitchell and it had to be DeVoe. They've led with their actions tonight. They really have. And, and this is an important game for Clemson. When you consider the loss on Tuesday at, at UVA, they can't afford to take two road losses in a row and stay in the mix of ACC play. At this time for the players, in all honesty, you're not. I mean, you want to play in the NCAA tournament. It's something that's always there. But each game matters so much that you're not concerning yourself with any of that long-term thinking right now. It's solely about getting as many wins as you possibly can and taking care of the game that's right in front of you. A lane violation on Clemson gives Akogi another try at that second free throw. And he gets this one 60-56. Seven minutes to play here in regulation. In front of an announced sellout at McCamish Pavilion. And now we see Josh Pastner with the 1-3-1 zone that morphs into somewhat of a 2-3 zone, more of a matchup. But Josh Pastner with a number of different looks on the defensive end of the floor, but yet unable to come up with a defensive rebound as Davis Starr attacks the boards and gains another possession for the Tigers. Lammers picked up his third. You see Scarra coming across, and Alvarado really coming in there trying to get some basketball, but gets a bit of the face of Davis Scarra as he comes down. They called the foul on Lammers. Amir Sims into the game for Scarra. Skip pass. Reed over a Kogi. And Marquise Reed has seven. You mentioned Marquise Reed, a double-figure assist, really having an all-around game. Hasn't been up to his normal scoring, the leading scorer for Clemson, averaging close to 16 points per game, but getting it done in all the other facets, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Gay attacking the freshman Sims. Not that time, but the tip by Akogi.
Reed to Thomas. And 11 helpers now for Marquise Reed. But more important, the dribble penetration to get inside that zone and not settling for a three-pointer. Clemson shot the ball very well, but Marquise Reed recognizing it's not time to settle for a three. Just attack the paint and make something happen. It's a six-point lead. And that's going to be four on Thomas right there trying to battle Lambers in the paint. And that's the benefit of having a guy like Ben Lambers to be able to go in there and try to establish position. Oftentimes, you can pick up fouls on a guy like Thomas without even throwing the ball inside. And a Thomas to the bench. Mark Donnell, the grad transfer from Michigan, comes in. Timeout by Josh Pastner with 519 left. Tonight on ESPN after X Games Aspen, it is Sports Center with Kevin Connors and John Anderson. A complete recap of Russell versus Simmons. Westbrook and Ben Simmons going head to head. Tiger's biggest challenge in the days ahead. Tiger uh, this weekend made the cut at the Farmers Insurance Open. We hear from Tom Brady and Nick Foles. They get ready for the Super Bowl. All this and everything else, Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You got a Super Bowl pick, Pats or Eagles? Well, you know, everything for me revolves around the Cowboys. So considering that the Eagles don't have a ring and I talk so much trash to Eagles fans, I don't want them to win. And being that the Patriots have five and the Cowboys have five, I don't want them to win. So I hope it ends in a draw. <laughs> And there is no Super Bowl winner this year, even though I know that's not going to happen. Rooting for the doomsday scenario. <laughs> Sims over Lammers, Amir Sims. Put his hands up. He's not sure how that went in. <laughs> and a big smile on his face as he recognizes that was a bit of a gift for Amir Sims on that end. But give him credit for the aggressive move to the basket against Ben Lambert. Brad Brownell wants him to play relaxed. Sims Lammers over Sims. And it's scooped up by Donnell. Mitchell, Alvarado. It looks like A.D. Gay took the shot on that possession. Gay still down at the opposing end of the floor. And that's the last thing Georgia Tech needs right now is any injuries. But Gay is definitely feeling that coming off the floor. Hobbling up right now as he slowly makes his way across half court. Shelton Foul Mitchell. was on Donnell as Mitchell attacks the basket. It's hard to see what actually happened there on that play. Did he just land awkwardly after the contact? Maybe on that right foot? You know, it's hard to speculate, and you don't want to speculate, but he is grabbing his midsection there. Maybe he just took a hit to the midsection, but it seems as though he was limping when he got up. But holding that midsection actually looks like the hip area that they're giving attention to. But he's been extremely valuable for Georgia Tech, so I know Josh Pastner is going to be checking on A.D. Gay, making sure he's fine and get him back into the game. Gay two points off of a career high. Both free throws good for Alvarado, an 81% free throw shooter. And we come down the home stretch. It's a six-point game. Georgia Tech is led by as many as 12. Clemson has led by as many as eight. Reed splits the D for two, and Clemson matches its largest lead of the game. And that's too easy for Marquise Reed to be able to get to the rim with no resistance, especially when you've got a shot blocker like a Ben Lammers. But Lammers does have his hand full because the thing about Mark Donnell, he's able to stretch the floor a different type of player than Elijah Thomas on the offensive end of the floor. 
Akogi shot fake. Lost it into the hands of Skara. Akogi knocks it away. Touched it last. It'll be Clemson ball. Not a popular call here with the fans. However, Clemson right now holding an eight-point lead over Georgia Tech. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. And the Volkswagen Tiguan, the not-so-compact, compact SUV. Since Josh Pastner took over as Georgia Tech's head coach, they've had some big wins against ranked teams in this building, including one against Miami earlier this month. But to score another one, Georgia Tech's going to need a little bit of a comeback. Down 68-60, three and a half to play in regulation. And good news for Josh Pastner. Abdullah Gay, who has played so well tonight, checks back into the game after taking a brief spill. And if you want to have a comeback, you need to be at full strength. And the way that he has played this evening, 14 points back into the game. And they're going to need his presence on both ends of the floor. As you see, Gay actually drawing the man-to-man -man assignment versus Marquise Reed. That's how much of a growth that this young man has made as a player when you've got your four-man going out and guarding a two-guard. Scar. Here is DeVoe. Shot clock at two. DeVoe beats it. Here comes Georgia Tech. Alvarado ahead of the pack. Loses control and able to call a timeout with 2.53 to go. And Jose Alvarado capable sometimes of the spectacular. Reining him in, having him play under control. That's something Josh Pastner is going to work on with him over the next few years. But that's as a coach, you would much rather have to rein a guy in than to ramp him up. If you've got to get a guy to play hard and play with energy, that is extremely difficult to do. Most coaches would love to take on the challenge of trying to rein a guy in. And Alvarado will know just really not to make this play when he doesn't have numbers as he continues to mature and grow in this program. But you have to love the fact that this young man comes in and plays with the spirit that he does. What's the best recipe for Georgia Tech if they're to get back into this game? We know they're not a great three-point shooting team. And they don't have to be with more than enough time right now to get Josh Okoge attacking the basket, but they haven't had a field goal in over three minutes, so they've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their best playmaker, who is Josh Okoge, allow him to get to the rim or get to the free throw line. Good things normally happen when he's aggressive. Alston. Six to shoot, Akogi drives to the basket, blocked by Thomas, and if that's a foul on Thomas, he's done, and that is five on Elijah Thomas. You called it, have Josh Akogi attack, and in this case, it gets Elijah Thomas out of the game. It does, and Elijah Thomas actually had a clean block on that shot, but there was some body contact between Thomas and Okogi. But that's the thing when you have a guy like Josh Okogi, even with five or six seconds left on the shot clock, he's not going to settle. He's going to try to find a way to be aggressive, and he does just that, attacking the shot blocker of Elijah Thomas. And you see as the ball releases, Thomas does a great job blocking that shot. But the collision between the two bodies, whether it's a foul or not, I mean, there is contact there, but he does a great job blocking the shot. It had no effect on that, on the block shot, a clean block, but there is a collision between the two bodies on that play. So in your estimation, was that a foul? Oh, man, don't put me on the spot like that. These are my guys. Now, you, Bill Covington, Doug Shouse, Kip Kissinger, these are my guys, but I'm going to go, I'm going Chris Boss right now. Let him play, man. Let That's play. not a foul. <laughs> But that's me being old school. I'm that old school guy who feels like he got a clean block on the ball. After that, the contact, in my opinion, is just incidental. 68-62. Mitchell's got 17. DeVoe now, he's got 25, a career high. Intercepted by Alvarado. Akogi on the wing, shot fake. 
A Kogi to the basket. And one! You ask for the recipe. Put Josh Okoge, add some water, and stir. And you get buckets off of the, tr the turnover. Josh Okoge now makes this a one possession game for Georgia Tech. Reed with the answer for Clemson. So a niche. In Clemson's four games that have been decided by four points or less, Marquise Reed has 22 points during the last four minutes of those games. Goodbye. That means he's averaging over four points a game in those stretch when it gets to crunch time. By far the Mr. Big Shot of this Clemson team. Okongi's been Mr. Big Shot down the stretch. Twenty four for Josh Jacoby. He has twelve of the last fourteen for the Yellow Jackets. Well, and he's making me look good because you asked how could Georgia Tech get back in this game? And this is the young man that you call his name and number, Josh Okogie, off of the find, is able to line up the three and knock it down. After attacking the basket on two previous possessions, the rim looks huge, and he's able to knock down the huge three to cut the lead to two. He's been an efficient scorer tonight, just nine shot attempts, seven of nine from the field. He's got to the free throw line ten times, 24 points. And Georgia Tech has trimmed what was an eight-point deficit just a couple of minutes ago down to two they've got the momentum with a little more than a minute and a half to go yellow jackets in the double bonus clemson will be in the bonus after the next georgia tech foul but at least i love what i saw from brad brownell's huddle as his team came over with the pokey knocking down that big three he pointed at Amir Sims and a number of his players and told them, smile. He wants these guys to be enjoying this moment, and he told them, we are okay, we're fine. Smile, enjoy what we're doing right now. Great coaching by Brad Brownell. Great coaching by Josh Pastor. I believe that's what separates this league from the others, the coaches along the sideline. Sims from the outside. No good. Georgia Tech can tie with a two and take the lead with a three. Okogi has had the hot hand. Gay against Sims. Gay turns around. Gets it back. Akogi kicks to the corner. Alston, no good. Akogi the rebound. And he is fouled. And Josh Akogi to the free throw line with a chance to tie the game. Chris Bosch likes it. A lot of number four jerseys in the stands, but it's been number five taking over down the stretch. Well, Kogi putting on one of those performances that makes you think that at some point, 10, 15 years from now, he'll come back here and they'll be having Josh Kogi jersey giveaway day, especially if he knocks down this free throw and ties this game when Georgia Tech just trailed by eight just a short time ago. Tied at 70 at Kogi, 14 of Georgia Tech's last 16.
Reed for the lead, gets the bounce. Brad, Brad Brownell. Brownell was screaming for a timeout. And he can call it on a dead ball. That's a timeout he should have been awarded. A Kogi. No good. Clemson basketball with five seconds to go. And the official is actually going to go over and look at that and be sure they got it right. And Donnell is down underneath the basket. Of course, under two minutes, they can go to the monitor and check to make sure they got the possession going the right way. We get another look at it here. Ben Lammers, clearly the last one to touch that. It doesn't go off Amir Sims' hand. Doug Sowers right on top of the call. Georgia Tech did not have a timeout. And they turned it to Okoge, whose Herculean efforts have spurred the comeback. But this is a big review as Clemson tries to hold on for what would be a big road win and a big confidence boost for Brad Brownell's team. And for those who don't know watching this game, this is a rivalry. No question about it. It's huge on the football field, but these two teams, permanent partners in the ACC, and now this their 131st meeting between the two, that would classify this as a strong rivalry. Now when it started, John Heisman was coaching the Georgia Tech basketball team. It is Clemson ball after the review. And Georgia Tech will have to foul as soon as this ball is inbounded. Scara to inbound. They get it to Reed, who is an excellent free throw shooter at 86%. And I mentioned the numbers, the 22 points in the final minutes of the game for Marquise Reed. And the, one of the main reasons for that is he's the guy that Brad Brunel trusts most to put the basketball in his hands at the end of the game to go to the free throw line. Clemson's all-time leading free throw percentage shooter and has an opportunity right now to make this a two-possession game with only 3.6 seconds remaining. And a timeout by Brad Brownell with 3.6 seconds to go. Georgia Tech fans nervous. Now, and, and oftentimes you would think, why would Brad Brownell call that timeout? Is he icing his own guy? But what he did, he actually spoke to Marquise Reed coming down the floor and asked him, are you good if I take the timeout now? And Marquise Reed related back to coach, yes, I'm fine. Reed more than confident enough to know that he can go knock down those free throws regardless. Brad Brownell wants to set his plan right now, knowing Georgia Tech has no timeout to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing with one make, two makes, or no makes off of this free throw. If Reed makes both, it's simple, don't foul the shooter. Now, if he makes one out of two, does Clemson foul, or do you look at the clock and say... It depends on which one it is. Because if he makes the second one, and you can set your defense, don't be shocked if you see a trap on the ball by Brad Brownell's team. It's a one and one he missed the first. Akogi. Alvarado. And Clemson hangs on for a 72-70 road win at McCamish. And Clemson dodging a bullet there. A close to 90% free throw shooter, Marquise Reed going to the line, missing the front end of a one and one. And a great play by Kogi to get it ahead to Alvarado, just not enough time. This would not have counted even if it had gone in. Alvarado not having enough time to get that shot off. Clemson doing a great job picking up Okogi, forcing him to give the basketball up. What did we learn about Clemson tonight? They showed a tremendous amount of resolve. And by the way, Gabe DeVoe, he can get it done on the road. 25, a career night for Gabe DeVoe with his roommate Dante Grantham out for the season. Coming up next, Wazoo and UW.